Hello students. So, in our previous lecture, we have uh, talked about the life of Oliver Goldsmith, and we have uh, been on the introductory part of our essay on national prejudices. So, so far we have read that uh, the author gives his introduction. He says uh, that I am of a traveling kind of person, a traveling kind of human being. and who uh, always uh, happens to be at public places so uh, generally i become a, an observer of the characters of the people and um, so the incident which he is talking about is what uh, that one day when he was having a walk so he met with the six people who have been having a political discussion and then uh, they invited him also to that discussion now let's move forward amongst a multiplicity multiplicity of other topics we took occasion to talk of the different characters of the several nations of europe he said that as uh, he had already talked about that we have been discussing uh, they that company those six people they have been discussing some political issue and they have invited me to uh, be a kind of judge to uh, tell the things in a clear manner to them as they were unable to decide it clearly so uh, he says amongst those multiplicity of other topics which they have been discussing or which we have been discussing we took occasion to talk of the different characters of the several nations of europe among all those political talks among all those political issues among all those different different issues which we have been discussing which we had have been talking about we have got the opportunity uh, suddenly because uh, you know that when we talk when we have a discussion or uh, such a leisurely discussion then generally uh, different our new topics emerge out of somewhere automatically so he said when we were uh, discussing those various topics of political nature this topic also came this has also i must this topic the different characters of the several nations of europe we as there are many nations in uh, europe continent so uh, suddenly or uh, slowly this idea that what are the different characters what are the different behavioral traits what are the different cultural traits of various countries or the people of those countries this has also came up as a topic for discussion when one of the gentlemen cocking his hat and assuming such an air of importance as if he had possessed all the merit of english nation in his own person declared that the dutch were a parcel of avaricious wretches the french a set of flattering sycophants that the germans were drunken sorts and beastly glutons and the spaniards proud haughty and surly tyrants but that in bravery generosity clemency and in every other virtue the english excelled all the world so this is what uh, he has been talking about the national prejudice this is the uh, topic of our essay where he has come now so he says that when uh, we have been discussing various political issues so one of the gentlemen as the topic amazed that how are the various characters how are the different different characters of various nations in europe so one person who is having this national prejudice in his character who is having this uh, airs of superiority he poking his hat means uh, just uh, bending uh, or uh, <coughs> his hat on one side on his head and assuming such an air of importance and he has assumed a very powerful air of importance as if he is the most important person in the world as if he is the uh, best person in the world he, as he is the most superior person in the world as if he had possessed all the merit of the english nation in his uh, own person 
he just assumed that kind of superiority as if he is the epitome of the whole english nation as if he is the representative of the all the good qualities of english nation and then he declared that the dutch were a parcel of avaricious wretches this is what he started declaring it means he hasn't spoken you now look at the word which the writer has chosen which the speaker has chosen that he hasn't spoke he hasn't discussed he hasn't announced this thing he just declared as if he is giving a decision and what he declared that the dutch the dutch people they were a parcel of avaricious wretches they were too greedy people this is his observation and this is how he uh, re- uh, demonstrated he uh, pictureized the dutch people that the dutch people they are greedy kind of people the french a set of flattering psychophants the french they are flatterers they are psychophants they are uh, such kind of people who just keep on praising and uh, serving the rich or the important people to uh, just get some benefit from them that kind of person flatterers these french people are that the germans were drunken sorts and the germans they are drunkards they are habitual drunkards they always uh, happens to be in a drunken state and beastly glutons and they are too much eaters they eat too much they are glutons they are beastly glutons means they eat too much and the spaniards proud haughty and surly tyrants and these then he is talking about spaniards the people of spain that they are proud haughty and surly tyrants they are rude tyrants they are tyrants they are not democrats they are uh, rude they are very proud but that in bravery generosity clemency kindness and in every other virtue whatever virtue you talk the english excelled all the world not only the europe not only the continent of europe but what he declared that whatever good quality you talk about whether it is generosity whether it is kindness whether it is bravery all the virtues they are observed or they are adorned by the people of england only so this is what that person assuming a very great superiority of himself as if he is the representative of the nation of england the whole of england is represented by his character and assuming that superiority he has declared this thing that the only virtuous the only kind the only brave people in the world live in england only all the other countries of europe have various kind of faults in their character this very learned and judicious remark was received with a general smile and approbation approbation by all the company and he says that this remark which is very learned and which is very judicious now this is this is uh, what i have been talking about that uh, there is a kind of humor in uh, the essays of oliver goldsmith now he is just putting it in a ironical manner that this judicious and learned observation remark was received with a general smile of approbation of uh, approval by the whole company means all the people in that company in that group they have received this declaration with a ready smile means they were all happy happily they welcomed this declaration this assumption this declaration all i mean but your humble servant he said all but your humble servant means not me all but me means they all agreed but not me i was the one who disagreed to this who uh, haven't welcomed it with a smile who endeavoring to keep my gravity as well as i could i reclined my head upon my arm continued for some times in a posture of affected thoughtfulness as if i had been musing on something else and did not seem to attend to their subject of conversation and he said that as because 
be in that company so you are in such a company where uh, except you all the other people are supporting an idea so how can you differ from them because they are so many they will uh, have so many arguments and obviously they will expel you from that company you can't put your ideas there in front of them who all are of a different you point so he says that i trying to uh, keep my gravity as well as i could if to keep just to keep my seriousness intact i just reclined my head upon my ha- arm on my hand means uh, as they were sitting on some table or uh, some chair uh, so he just reclined his head on his um, hand and he continued for some time in a posture of thoughtfulness means i just tried to make a posture as if i am thinking i am musing on something else and did not seem to attain or did not ha- hear what they have been talking about so i just tried because be, uh, when you are in such a company and when you don't have uh the same kind of view point then uh, it is quite a natural thing to avoid the discussion and that is what the uh, author tried that is what the speaker of this essay tried that i just assume a posture as if i have been thinking something and i have been in such a deep thought that i haven't thought of um, as if i haven't listened to them hoping by these means to avoid the disagreeable necessity of explaining myself and why i have adopted that posture why i have been in that position just to avoid that disagreeable necessity disagreeable because i am not agreeing to them and if they will uh, call me to say something then it would be something uh, painful for me and thereby depriving the gentleman of his imaginary happiness and if i would have been spoken in disagreement of them if i have been uh, shown my disagreement openly then perhaps that gentleman would have been deprived of that imaginary happiness which he has been feeling right at the moment by making such a declaration and by uh, having such a bright welcome happy welcome by all the listeners so this is how he has tried himself to uh, avoid the this kind of discussion because he was not having the same kind of thoughts the same kind of ideas in his mind but still what happens what he thought what he discussed with them we will came to know it in our next lecture thank you